Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Gabby. And this is Trunk Talk, the podcast where we talk about all things automotive. In today's episode, we are talking about a type of vehicle that some people really, really love. And even if you're not a fan of this vehicle, keep listening because it's going to get very juicy and I think you're going to want to hear what we have to say. So Gabby, what are we talking about? Today we're rolling coal in the diesel world. So essentially we're going to talk about what is a diesel vehicle, what's a diesel engine, how is it different than the petrol car world or hybrid world. And we're also going to get into a very, very juicy scandal. And if you've been around for at least 10 years, you may have heard of what we're going to talk about today, but I'm going to save it for later on in the episode. I want to start off with, first off, what car are we in? We are in the 2024 Kia Seltos, and mm -hmm. this is the X-Line. So it's a super exciting car. Now, if you're watching this in the video format, you may it may look like we're sitting in a row of different condiment options. We got a beautiful red Sorrento over here, this mustard yellow-green Seltos, and then a mayonnaise-colored Seltos right over there. So um, there you go. There's our variety, and today's video is all about variety and how it didn't, too well, <laughs> didn't do very well in North America. Wow, that so, was an <laughs> impeccable segue. Thank you. <laughs> so the rise and the fall and what led to either of those things in the North American market when it comes to diesel vehicles. Let's roll into it. Let's get into it. So I think to start off is we kind of want to talk about what a diesel engine is and how does it differ from a petrol or gasoline engine. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to make it very clear. I'm simply a car enthusiast. I am not a master mechanic and I realize that. The point of this podcast is just to keep things simple in, in pretty simple layman's terms. That way anyone, even if you are not a master mechanic like me and just simply enjoy vehicles, can listen and follow along. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your gasoline and your diesel engine is both of them are internal combustion engines. Uh, so they're going to have a very similar anatomy. Where they're really going to differ is how the air and fuel mixture is ignited. So both of them are going to follow the same four stroke cycle with it being the intake stroke and then compression, power, exhaust. But when it is, comes to that power in a de or in a gasoline engine, that's what I'm trying to say, is you're going to have your spark plug that's going to ignite your fuel and air combo. In diesel, it's going to ignite by compression. And again, it feels like I need to do hand gestures whenever I'm talking about compression or engines because that is how I think about it <laughs> in forms of cylinders and pistons and moving my hands up and down. There's a sign to watch the video version of this podcast. Yeah, you so if you're just listening, gestures. go and see, check us out on YouTube too. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to be the main difference is one is simply igniting by spark versus igniting by compression. Awesome. All right, so I want to get kind of into the pros and cons of diesel. Some of my family members love diesel, still drive them, or had one that was affected by the scandal. Mm. More on that later. And then some of my family members and friends just, like, they never really thought of diesel in mm. a regular car. Um, I think the common misconception with the diesel vehicle is it's heavy, it's stinky, and it's dirty. And that's largely because a lot of diesel application in today's age, especially North America, is in heavy-duty vehicles. Think your school bus your ton trucks your three-quarter ton trucks school bus like you said tractors yeah farm equipment it's usually those bigger vehicles and not necessarily what someone like me or you drive mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day. although we totally would <laughs> really cool so charlotte give me some pros you're a very positive person i think you should lead the way with this oh thank you <laughs> and i do love diesel vehicles so um, as Gabby was saying, as a lot of people think of diesel, they think like dirty and stinky. And I feel like there's a mental connection there where people also think that they're not efficient. Mm -hmm. When in reality, the diesel engine is incredibly efficient, especially when um, you've got a turbo with it too. What that turbo is going to do is it's going to push more air into the cylinder. It's going to allow the piston to do less work and it's going to operate a little bit more effectively too, or efficiently. And some of the efficiency also comes from the fuel of diesel as well and its actual compound. So it's made up of a lot more longer, of long hydrocarbon ca carbons oh, <laughs> than a regular gasoline fuel, which means the fuel itself has a little bit more energy, about 30 to 35 percent more depending. So the energy that you get from a unit of diesel fuel is far more energy efficient than yes. a unit of gasoline fuel. Exactly. So there's mm -hmm. your application of yes. it. <laughs> um, of course, you're also going to have a higher compression ratio because it is igniting by combustion in your, diesel, in your diesel engine. So pretty much with a longer stroke and the turbo boost pressure, you're going to get more torque at a lower RPM. And so if you don't quite understand what that means, is it's basically you need less fuel to actually move your vehicle. 
So I think that's a huge benefit with diesel vehicles. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times why you see their application in large heavy duty vehicles, more specifically work vehicles mm -hmm. or high passenger vehicles, is because there is so much torque for the fuel unit yeah. that it just gets things moving. They're very durable too. So Absolutely. More points, Charlotte, keep rolling. There are, I was gonna say, there's a couple points where it's more so for the consumer, not necessarily just operating heavy duty equipment, heavy duty trucks, mm -hmm. uh, but some of the pros is you're gonna get, of course, better fuel economy at a steady speed. Mm -hmm. With a petro engine, your fuel economy is going to, it's going to suffer as you're accelerating more, whereas your linear, linear acceleration with diesel is going to be a lot more stable. Um, also, they can be less maintenance is, you know, there's, you're still gonna have to do maintenance on these on these vehicles because they are still an internal combustion engine, but it's not like they have spark pl spark plugs, coil packs, stuff like that. You know, you're not really bringing it in for a tune-up like you would your regular, di uh, your regular gas, not diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, also, they have a slower depreciation is these vehicles, they run, they run. Yes. <laughs> and there is a huge, huge, huge fan base for diesel, whether Absolutely. it's TDI in the Volkswagen world or even just in the truck world, mm -hmm. like Cummins, Power Stroke, Duramax, Whichever North American make you choose, there is probably a huge market for a nice diesel truck. Yeah, for sure. Not probably, there is. <laughs> so you may have a little bit of a higher acquisition cost, but your your payoff your payoff is going to remain steady. Mm -hmm. All right. Are those all your pros? Those are my pros. Well, not to be that girl, but I'm going to list some cons. And with that being said, just like Charlotte said, we're automotive enthusiasts. I love diesel mm -hmm. vehicles. Absolutely love diesels. But I'm going to talk about some of the things that maybe made it not take off that well here in North America unless you do need it for said purposes, like a work vehicle or a heavy vehicle. So number one is not to contradict what Charlotte said, but the cost. So she did mention that they have a higher overall purchase price, and that is absolutely correct. But in the long run, it'll actually cost you quite a bit as well, even just refueling your vehicle. So where I live, it's a very urban area, mm -hmm. lots of cars, not necessarily diesel vehicles. Not every gas station has a diesel pump, and if it does, it probably only has one or two, and if it's in use, you might have to wait, which is no biggie. It is what it is. But that's still more so the issue of finding one. And even if you do find one, diesel is significantly more expensive than mm -hmm. gasoline here where we live. And then of course that varies region by region. Diesel might be cheaper where you are. It totally depends on where you live and of course your lifestyle application. And a lot of that is going to come from the refining process diesel has to go mm -hmm. through uh, before it can be sold to make it a little bit more um, e eco-friendly. Yes, there's using... a whole application of biodiesel as well, yeah. which I think we might need another podcast episode <laughs> for that. But using that term eco-friendly very loosely, uh, but also it's <laughs> yes. taxed. Yes, 100%. So that is one kind of downside. Another one is depending on what kind of diesel vehicle you have, if you have a heavy duty truck, you will be looking at utilizing a diesel mechanic, which are usually more costly. Again, that might be totally okay for you because mm -hmm. you know what you're getting into in the diesel world. However, when there were more so TDI vehicles like a Beetle or a Jetta, average cars, you know what I mean? What people drive. My mm -hmm. grandma drove a TDI Jetta for so long, she loved it. More on that later. Um, it's just a little bit of a higher cost when it comes to the mm -hmm. maintenance when you do the maintenance. Another thing, okay, so you mentioned the pro cost of the vehicle. There's also the pollution that comes with the vehicle. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. And it's gonna get pretty dark in a couple minutes, but for now, I'm just gonna start off by saying that the tailpipe emissions from diesel vehicles have a high content of nitrogen oxides, which has been linked mm -hmm. to lung cancer. So the emissions testing for diesel vehicles has become very, very hard due to another scandal that we will mention very, very shortly. You're, you're really uh, pulling uh, me in yes. with the scandals and your grandma <laughs> and all worry. the details. <laughs> so um, a lot more refinement has been done for diesel vehicles. And another thing now, so if you're looking to get a diesel vehicle, your only options are trucks. So there are no more light utility vehicles, SUVs really, or yeah. cars especially here in North America, sold as new, I should say. You can certainly get one used, but at a higher cost. Mm -hmm. um, just because of this whole scandal that we're gonna talk about. So, you ready? Let's get into it. Let's get into it, okay. So this kinda came to light in 2015, or September of 2015, so not that long ago, and there's still lots of articles being released about kinda- The ongoing effects. The ongoing effects, absolutely. So, back in 2015, the Volkswagen emissions, emissions scandal, AKA, Diesel gate. Dun dun dun. <laughs> um, or emission gate. Dun dun dun. dun. Wasn't came, quite on with that one. <laughs> it came to light. So essentially, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, aka the EPA, issued a notice of violation against the Clean Air Act to German automaker VAG. And no, not what you're thinking. We're talking about Volkswagen Auto. 
group. So those TDI vehicles that you know and love, like that beautiful, cute little beetle that was a TDI, it's a liar, a dirty, dirty liar. She's a dirty girl. Dirty, dirty girl. So essentially what Volkswagen was doing at the time, they installed these illegal software devices on about 11 million vehicles worldwide. So this isn't just North America, this is Europe. This is, again, worldwide. Volkswagen is a major player in the automotive world and they, it doesn't matter what country you visit, you're probably gonna find a V-dub there. Yep. Yes. And I will say, we are dubbers. We do enjoy, We love. We like Volkswagen. We got them in our family. Yes. <laughs> or we had them in our family. Yeah. R.I.P. Um, nonetheless, so they had a violation against the Clean Air Act, mm -hmm. which in California especially, it is a huge deal. Their emissions laws are super, super tight. And they got even tighter after this, I'll tell you that. All right, so they intentionally programmed their vehicles with this defeat device. And essentially it was a software that would let the vehicle know when it was undergoing emissions testing. And only then would their in-house emission systems kick in. So essentially it would use hints like, is there any steering pressure? Like, is there yeah. any, you know, if you're daily driving your vehicle, you're probably turning, you're making some slight adjustments to the steering wheel. It would know when it's on an emissions track or if it's actually just being driven. And only on the emission system would it actually kick in to give you that clean diesel that Volkswagen heavily marketed back so in the day. This is very much like this was very much intentional. It's not yes. that there was some huge discrepancy. It was very much this was the intent behind it and designed specifically for this situation. Mm -hmm. So when everything was nicely cleanly running, when they were undergoing emissions testing, it held with the with the regulations. Mm -hmm. It actually did great, honestly. Um, everyone was surprised with diesels. Diesels did really well considering there wasn't a huge demand for them in North America other than for heavy vehicles. Even if you look now, you go for a drive in Brantford over here, Hamilton, doesn't matter where you are, chances are you might run into an older Volkswagen diesel. Yep. Mercedes had some diesels, they had their blue techs. You can even get it in a Jaguar. If you wanted a Chevy Cruze with a diesel option, that was it totally was there. an option. But not so anymore. Not anymore. You can only get a heavy Chevy, maybe a Ford, Dodge, that is all. So nonetheless, this emission scandal was huge. It created millions, billions, I should say, it's billions of dollars in buybacks. So Volkswagen would essentially buy back the vehicles that have been under this recall for mm -hmm. this emission lie. My grandma did have a Volkswagen Jetta stick shift that she loved so much, would talk about it all the time. She's like, I love my Volkswagen, it's so much fun. They took it back, well, they bought it back. So. They did make amends, and yeah. I will say Volkswagen has made a huge push towards the electrification of their lineup. So mm -hmm. if you look at the Golf, which again came as a diesel and was affected, we now have an e-Golf, we have the ID lineup. They're doing some great things with their current model year, and they're definitely trying to make amends from this huge scandal. Absolutely. But nonetheless, it was very dirty. That, that was a scandal, for sure. That was definitely a scandal. That is definitely some juicy, yes. some juicy tidbits. Yes, absolutely. So Charlotte, are there any points you want to make? Is there any, has there been a diesel vehicle that you love that's not a truck mm. that might have been, like you were excited to see the future of it, but now it's no longer an option? Not necessarily that it's, well, I mean, there's not really much of anything, <laughs> but my experience with diesels is it's obviously going to be Volkswagen and it's, you know, it's early 2000s. It's the Jetta station wagon. It's just the Jetta TDI. And I genuinely like those cars. I think they're fun. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, how much torque they have. Um, but the one thing that I struggled with, and this is another drawback of diesel vehicles, is how difficult it is for them to start in the winter. Great point. I forgot to mention that in the cons list. <laughs> well, take it away. Go for it. Well, maybe that will make this our fun fact. We like to do mm -hmm. a fun fact at the end of our um, podcast. So fun fact, diesel fuel actually kind of turns jelly-like in the cold. So this, of course, viscosity of the fuel, <laughs> this thickness, doesn't allow for proper flow, allowing or causing the engine not to start in colder climates. Mm -hmm. So Charlotte actually has a personal story of yes. her husband or then boyfriend at the time. Yeah. Jetta. So obviously, like we know about glow plugs, those are a thing when it comes to diesel vehicles. Um, but usually you got to plug them in, uh, your diesel vehicles. Now, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time when I was living in Owen Sound, which is just off of Georgian Bay, so it's a little bit cooler. He would come up to visit me and the amount of times he got stuck there in the winter is absolutely insane. And it's not even that it was freezing cold. It was five degrees Celsius and the car wouldn't start. And it's like, okay, I guess you're gonna be here until it warms up. Yeah. So <laughs> the spring. <laughs> so selfishly, I was very grateful for that. But when you miss so much work in school, it becomes a little bit 
a little bit difficult. Bit of an issue. So if you do live somewhere like us, so Canada or any of the states that are a bit colder mm -hmm. or in Europe that's colder, you would definitely, I would 100% recommend investing in an engine block heater. Yes. Because that car is just not going to start without it. No. Or if you have a garage, that's perfect. If you have underground parking at, I don't know, your building or whatnot, park there. Because if you park on the street, chances are you're going <laughs> to... You're going to run into some some issues. Some starting concerns. Yeah, and of course this isn't a problem with the vehicle itself. It's just the way diesels are, mm -hmm. essentially. So there's no damage to your car, but it's just, it's not a fun time. Especially, yeah. you have a car because you need to go places. And when you can't go places, why do you have a car? It doesn't really make too much sense. Not to me. <laughs> um, I think the last thing I just want to say, and this was a point that you had brought up a couple days ago when we were talking about what we wanted to do for our podcast, <laughs> but you know, this, before the scandal came to light is Volkswagen was marketing the heck out Ooh. of how, econo Ooh. how, um, how green their vehicles were. Yes. They made a huge claim. Yeah. They claimed that their eco diesel, I, I shouldn't say eco diesel, Dodge used that for a while, but basically their clean air diesel was cleaner than the Toyota Prius, which when you think of clean in a car, the Prius is like the poster child for yes. that is what I think of. They're together hundred percent. Yeah. And that was a huge claim, obviously a wrong claim before this, you know, scandal came out. Yeah. <laughs> but their whole marketing strategy is, you know, they kind of adopted this scandal to mm -hmm. get to tap into the diesel market in North America. And the ones who ended up benefiting from that is our domestics. The Americans. And the trucks. They're the only ones making the diesels now, so. In North America. So obviously in other places in the world, you can still totally get diesel sedans, SUVs, but here in North America, it's going to be your trucks. Yep. So it's insane how that was kind of their intention. It majorly backfired, but you know, your domestics were able to come in, swoop in and really uh, take that segment to target on. So they did in a way bring diesels back to North America. They just didn't. Didn't do it through them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and on that note, I think that sums up today's episode of Trunk Talk. This is our fourth episode, yeah? Yep, fourth episode. So if you want it to make it to five, don't forget to leave a like <laughs> and rate this podcast. Again, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can actually leave a YouTube comment down below. Mm -hmm. Let us know if there's any specific topic you'd like to see and also what you think of the podcast. We're always looking for new ways to improve. And of course, we want to talk about topics that our listeners want to hear. Yes. All right. So, of course, we are not master mechanics. We just like to talk about cars. Well, um, I'm a master mechanic. I yeah, Gabby's know. a master mechanic. <laughs> we just like to talk about cars. Yeah. If you want to hear a little bit more from Gabby and myself, you can find us on YouTube at the Kia Hyundai channel, where we do reviews, tips, tricks, and we also post this podcast. So thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you in our next episode. See you then. Bye-bye.